Ladies and gentlemen, good day. This is Glenn Tan speaking. I'm from Gree Training Department. Today, it is an honor to have such a great chance to be with you. And we are going to talk about the modular chiller troubleshooting. And also, as you know that from our grid, we have the on-off series and also the inverter series. And based on that, this time we're going to talk about the inverter. And the working series of the on-off is almost the same as the inverter. If so, you can uh, take it as a reference. Presentation divided into these three parts. To uh, emphasize how to do the wiring. On this slide, I'm going to introduce how to do the modularization. And for example, in this tie, you just have two uh, chillers, chiller number one and chiller number two. And for the modularization for the inverter, and you, you need to connect the CN25 to this CN33. Just like this. And also from this CN25, you can connect it to the uh, controller, which is here. And actually for the inverter, uh, the controller is just like this. And it cannot modularize with the on-off series. And actually from here, there are just two ports. CN4 is for the connected to the chiller. And this is the uh, outdoor unit, the control main board. And here is the controller socket, which is this uh, 20, 20, uh, CN25 and CN33. And besides, you also need to change the, this switch, which is located here. Generally, if this chiller connected to the controller, this one is the master, which means that this switch should be all to be zero, just like this. And for this one, you just need to change to different, it's okay. And if you're going to connect to more than two chillers, this connect from this CN33 to next CN25. The maximum we can connect it up to 16 chillers. And just like what I said, from this uh, CN2, we it's output the RS4A5 signal, and from this RS4A5 converter, you can connect to a uh, uh, BMS system. And as, actually, for this one, you can buy it from our grid, so we can offer you this two, according to the different output. You can also buy it from your local market which means um, for this one, you don't need to buy it from our grid. And once you require, we will provide you this RS4A5 protocol. So you can control the chiller, which is this one, from the computer. And this is for the inverter series for the modularization. It's for the on-off, which is the D or E series the wiring is similar and but, but this one the controller is different which means uh, you can also identify from the model it will be cs1a15a but also from here there are two ports cn5 is to connect it to the chiller and cn4 is output the 4a is 485 signal for the bns control Also, for the on-off, uh, we have another controller, which is this one, CF61. And for this one, and the, the wiring is also similar, which means uh, from the uh, first 35, uh, 25 to the next 33. And also need to change the, this switch. And from here, is also need to connect it to the uh, BNS system. But before that, for this CF61, we need our ME30, which is this one, as we need to change the output to the RS485 signal. And 
from here you can also find that uh, there are actually three ports one is for to connect to this CS CF61 the other is for to combine them together and here is going to introduce if you would like to combine the on off and the inverter uh, cheater together here is how to do it so for example uh, this one is the on off and also this one is the same and this is the inverter series which means also you can identify from the uh, controller right and we uh, you need to use this cf614 for the combination you can find it we just output the signal which is from here and combine them together and then from this RS485 converter to connect to the uh, computer and if the uh, communication length is more than 800 meters or more than 30 modules which is more than modules of, the, of this one we need to use this uh, repeater to ensure the communication and this is uh, how we do in China domestic market which means on from here you can also find that for all the uh, chillers including the modular chiller or the screw and the centrifugal chiller we always uh, have a uh, GPIS or the 4G then we can transist the operating data to the uh, base and then transist it to our grid cloud so with computer or the smartphone we can uh, assist it and get the operating data from it and for the this is for uh, China domestic market and for the overseas market and for for this part especially for uh, we don't have an uh, 4G or GPRS signal to transist the data so you can use the Ethernet cable to transist the op operating data to the uh, local server and then we can use the computer or your smartphone to access it to get the operating data and of course this uh, require the engineering customized for the next chapter I'm going to introduce the reference cycle and the water cycle and first I'm going to introduce how the vapor cycle and water cycle flow in cooling mode and on the left side is the vapor cycle right side is the water they just combine together with this tube and shoe heat exchanger and on the vapor cycle we have the complexor four-way well outdoor heat exchanger EXV and also the gas liquid separator and also uh, on the refrigeration cycle we have lots of the switch or the pressure sensor and temperature sensor to check the system and also to maintain the operation should can be uh, within the desired range and here is the refrigeration cycle coming out from the complexer the hot uh, and temperature and hot high pressure gas will flow to the outdoor heat exchanger to release heat then the gas will become liquid and get expanded at this EXV and then from here it will be the low temperature and uh, pressure liquid and go to this one to absorb heat which is doing cooling to cool down the water so the the refrigerant itself will become gas and flow back to the gas liquid separator after separated the liquid part the 100% liquid will flow back to the complexer and this is for the on off series as for the inverter series we had need, need to change here which is at the IPN module and this one the purpose of this is just to cool down the complexer dry as the the complex dry will just cause loss of the will release loss of the heat we need to cool it down and with the refrigeration and also another uh, EXV 
this tool yes over here is just to ensure the refrigerant which is get through the IPM module, not to so cold. So and this is the refrigerant cycle. Just focus on the water cycle. On the water cycle is a uh, regular. We have the expansion tank and water pump and also before and after this Q and shoe heat exchanger we need to use the uh, temperature and pressure gauge to check the temperature and the pressure and also this is the FCU just for example so the, the water just coming out, out from the uh, water pump it will flow to the, this one to uh, being cooled down and coming out will be the chilled water, right? And this chilled water will go to the FCU to absorb heat, which is ensure uh, the temperature not to go so high. And then coming out will be the water, and then flow back to the uh, water pump. And this time it is the heating cycle and the structure which is the uh, chiller and also the water system is no change and what what's different is uh, we just change the direction on the four-way valve here and here is how the refrigerant flow the gas from the complexer will first flow to this uh, to ensure heat exchanger to release heat which is to heating up the water then is the refrigerant itself will become liquid and flow to this EXV and get expanded. Then the refrigerant become low pressure and temperature liquid. Can go to auto heat exchanger to absorb heat. Then itself will become gas and flow to the gas liquid separator. Then to the complexer. And also uh, focus on this uh, refrigerant cycle. This is for the on off how we control it. And for the inverter, and if you have uh, remembered very well, just at last slide, we just had the IPM module here, right? <laughs> and which is this one. And this time, this the refrigerant will get expanded at this ESV2. This is for heating. ESV1 is for cooling. The purpose of we set two ESV here is just to ensure the refrigerant gets through this IPM module the temperature will not be that cool. If it is very cold, it will just make the condensing water and then the condensing water will absolutely damage this IPM module, which is uh, we need to avoid. So, and this is all for the refrigeration cycle. As for the uh, water cycle, this time is no change, which means we don't change the direction. And also the water from the water pump will flow to the uh, heat exchanger after heating up will become the warm or the hot water then we can make this uh, hot water to flow to the FCU to release heat which is doing heating then the this uh, water will be cooled down and flow back to the water pump For the next part is the detail troubleshooting. First of all, what is error? And actually in the chiller system, we always keep monitor every important parameter like the complexer discharge temperature and the pressure and also at the outdoor temperature. And for this one, we always uh, we adjust the components setting like the complexer or the outdoor fan RPN and even the ESV opening to keep above, which is the uh, our important parameter, we make sure it is in the desired range. And just like this, for example, uh, we have the, for every important parameter, we already set up the regular control zone and also the protective control zone and for example we take the uh, complexer discharge temperature for example and if it is higher 
into this protected zone, we will adjust the, the parameter like to decrease the complex RPM or to higher the EXV opening to make it to, light, uh, to going down. And next time, if it is lower than the uh, regular lower limit, we always we adjust the parameter to make it to a bit higher. And once it is in this zone, the system will not do any uh, protected uh, control to do that. And but if it out of this uh, protected zone, the system we have no idea, but just shut down and display the error code, which is E4. As for how to check the operating parameter for the on-off, which is the D or E series, which use this uh, CF158 controller, just press here to check and then select which uh, our dot unit, which is the which chiller, and then select uh, the item, either the temperature or the component status. So here the status, we display the status of the components and here is the temperature. As for the inverter series, which use this uh, controller, press here and select which uh, chiller. Then select the data or the uh, stator. We will also play this one for you. And this is all the information uh, we will provide you from the controller, including the uh, components status, on off, and all the uh, solenoid wealth. As for the parameter, uh, once we have in our temperature sensor or the pressure sensor, we will always uh, display this for you. This is the maintenance tools you may use during the troubleshooting. And this is the multimeter. And this is the grid tie uh, ammeter to check the current. And this is the refrigerant leakage detector. And this is the pressure gauge to check the refrigerant system pressure. And also you need to uh, equip with this uh, spanner and screwdriver. And this isolation texture is to check the complex resistance. Later, I will introduce how to use it. First is the temperature sensor. We also call it semester. Actually, the temperature sensor, uh, it is just a resistance, but it is uh, the value is very sensitive to the temperature, which means if the temperature change also leads to the resistance value change. Then for the PCB, we always use the voltage to check it, which means the voltage also change. Then the PCB can get the temperature information. And based on that, uh, we, the system will change the component parameter. And inside the chiller, there are three types of the sensors, which is the 15K ohm. It is for the high temperature, which is the compressor discharge pi and the 50 k ohm it is for the low temperature which means the outdoor ambient temperature and the last is the uh, 20 k ohm to check the uh, tube and also uh, the water and also you can find it this is the relation between the resistance value and the temperature sensor and also you can find it we always use this part to check the uh, resistance and also the temperature, which means it is more sensitive, right? So uh, in this is the reason why we need to have three types of the uh, sensors because the sensitivity is different. And why we call it 15K ohm or the 20K ohm is based on when the temperature is 25 degree and the detected uh, with resistance value if it is 15, just like this, this is the uh, 15 K ohm um, sensor. And how the system will uh, use this uh, information is just like this. And for example, the compressor discharge sensor. And 
we know that the complexor should not be overheat if it become a uh, for example 130 degree it release to the oil decompose which it will shorten the complexor lifespan so on the system we always uh, put the this temperature sensor at where the it is hottest which is the complexor discharge and and always keep it watch and also say in the control program if the detected temperature is higher than for example uh, 102 degree we just increase the exv opening to make the refrigerant to flow back more back to the complexer to cool it down and the next is if higher than 112 we will we have no idea but just uh, reduce the complexer rpm and if it is higher than uh, 120 this time <laughs> we have to shut down the system for protection and first is uh, i will introduce how the system will judge or display this temperature sensor error. Actually, the system always get the AD value from the sensor. If this value exceeds the upper or lower limit for 30 uh, seconds, for example, it will display this error. So you can also double check from the uh, display here. And the checking method is uh, first to reconnect the sensor uh, to this connector and then to check the resistance value just compare with the uh, standard resistance value whether it is okay or not and here is how we do in China and in China when we do the troubleshooting uh, we always bring a good temperature sensor and just compare the uh, good one the resistance value with the special one if this uh, two values not uh, change too much that means the special one is okay and after that uh, something wrong with the, the main board you need to replace it and next is the freezing protection which is the temperature for the uh, cooling as you know that for the cooling if we make it too too cold as it, as it just you know, make heat exchange with the water for the water the most problem is it will be frozen which is become ice and then from this picture you can also find that if it become uh, ice it will just damage the inside components which is the uh, to ensure uh, heat exchanger you can see that from this picture the frozen will just make it to be bent and also from this is we make it crack And here is how to make the the system will display the this error. Why? And from water side, we just detect the water temperature at the living water and also the anti-freezing. We check this one if it is lower than the setting value. And we will and we trigger this error. And of course, if this error higher than the preset uh, malfunction frequency, like uh, one hour, three or four times it will lock out the system for a restart and uh, uh, and before that we also had the uh, uh, freezing protection um, which is uh, if we detect the temperature is lower than the setting value plus the preset value for example three we will just lower the compressor rpm this is for the inverter and for the uh, and for on off series and we only have the this one which is uh, if we detect it lower than this we need to shut down the corresponding chiller and first turn off the complexer and then turn off the fans and uh, quantum and automatically recover if we detected the id value uh, resume to the desired range and of course, we recommend to reset the power. And the next is the high pressure sensor error. 
this time it's just the uh, sensor itself, not the system uh, detected AD value. <laughs> and which means according to the pressure AD value, we get it from the sensor. The PCB always will change the parameter, just like change the compressor RPM or the fan RPM and even the ESV opening to maintain the system reliability. And maybe this uh, pressure sensor is open circuit or short circuit. This to the AD value is this the uh, limit. And the action is just like this. And the system will shut down the corresponding complexors. And after shutdown, we will shut off the uh, uh, fans. And but also maintain the water pump operating. And if it is in heating, the four way well just will be made a uh, position. And of course, if this uh, resume, this AD value resume to the desired range, it can uh, recover. And of course, if this error, uh, the frequency is higher than our setting, it will the system will lock out from restart. And for this, it for this feature is the same to all our uh, uh, errors. And here is how to check it. And of course, first is to check uh, this connection. So we connect this uh, connector to the main ball and on our system we also have lots of the, uh, the this port so you can use the pressure gauge to check whether the uh, pressure is really so high or not and uh, the next the last one is just uh, something wrong with this uh, PCB you need to replace it And the next is the complexor or the complexor drive malfunction, including the complexor overcurrent, complexor IPM malfunction, or the uh, desynchronize of the complexor, and the complexor startup failure. And actually, this is a uh, has the relationship with the current, especially the complexor current is uh, higher than our preset value. It will trigger this error. And here is the actions. Um, actually, first to shut down the complexor, and if all the complexor with the same chiller is, is shut down, then we can turn off the fans of this chiller. And also, uh, at the same time, maintain the water pump operating. If in heating mode, we will uh, make the four way well position. And of course, this uh, will uh, automatically recover if the detected current is less than our preset value. And here is how to do the troubleshooting for a completely new system. This time you, need, you just need to check the, whether the power supply, especially the voltage, is really too is really uh, too high or not. And all the next is to check whether the ventilation is not that good. Maybe something wrong or some uh, op foreign objects just broke the uh, ventilation. Just consider the condensing side. And for an existing uh, system, this time, especially for uh, you just repair the uh, chiller, this time you need to check whether this is the poor contact of the complexor UVW wire. And of course, to check the sequence of the UVW. After that, we divided the reason into the complexor malfunction or the drive ball, which is the IPN malfunction. Function. And you just avoid that, maybe the inside core, just like this picture, maybe just burn. And also this to the inside, over this the wire, for example, is the UV ductive. This wire is open circuit or short circuit. So we just need to check the resistance value of this core. Need to, so use the multimeter and change it to the uh, ohm. And then measure the U to V. U to W, V to W, which is these three coils, the value. It should be less than 2 ohm. And also, the next is to check the isolation resistance of each terminal, which is the each terminal with the earth. And this value should be more than 10 uh, mega ohm. And if during the uh, operation, if you heard the uh, abnormal noise, 
also we, you can judge the something wrong with it. I will display two audios for you and you can judge that which is uh, abnormal. First is this one. And the next one, and please attention to the loud noise. So you can find that it's completely different, right? And the reason is uh, the number two, which is the last one, is a malfunction. So you can judge that from the noise. And uh, next is judge from the temperature rise, which is during any time. You just find that the complex uh, temperature in anywhere, if it is more than 120 degree, you can also judge that the complexor is malfunction. This is the procedure when you're going to replace the complexor. Just follow this one to replace it. It's okay. And the first one is to judge whether the uh, oil quality is contaminated or not. And how to judge it is just like this. And from the color, from the transparency, from the viscosity and the smell, you can judge it whether it is clear or contaminated. Back to here, if you find that the oil is not clear, you need to clear, you need to clean the pipeline and also the inside components. It is really a tough job. And after that, it's the same as uh, when the oil is clear, dis disconnect the power supply and clear the uh, electrical part and remove the complexor. And you can also find that whether the oil is contaminated or not, you still need to we still recommend to change the gas liquid separator. And after that, is change the complexor and do the system leakage check and charge the refrigerant and also to connect back the uh, electrical parts. The reason why we require this one is this. This is the sectional wheel of gas liquid separator. From this graph, you can find that the refrigerant comes from this pipe. And then the liquid part will accumulate at the button. The gas will flow into this pole and then follow this pipe and flow out from this and which is go to the complexor and also you can find that here there is a hole which is this one and here there is a filter this is we say this for the oil return which means this is only for the oil return and the liquid which is the refrigerant cannot get through the filter and then what we are afraid is that uh, the impurities, which it means uh, when we're going to replace the complexor, that means uh, with higher possibility the complexor is burned down. Yes, and just like this picture, so you can find it uh, from this coil is burned down of the complexor, and also maybe the uh, rotor it, it also wear out. Also, this will generate the impurity. And what we're afraid is that these impurities with just uh, blockage this filter and make the oil cannot get through it, which means for the new replaced complexor, sooner or later, the oil cannot flow back to the complexor and this to the complexor to malfunction again due to not enough oil. And then the next is the out of fan motor error. And also um, the fan motor is similar to the complexor, it's just there is no uh, oil return system. And so the judgment and also the error is very similar, including the fan motor overcurrent, fan motor IPN, and also the desynchronizing and the start of failure. 
and which is uh, when we detected the fan motor, RPN is not the same as our order. Especially at a start up period, we also check this error. And here is the uh, action procedure, which is to shut down the corresponding chiller, first compressor, then the fan, and also maintain the water pump operating. And in heating mode, keep the full weight well position. And of course, it can automatically uh, recover. And here is the checking method. And first is to reconnect the wiring from the uh, fan motor to the fan motor drive. And the next is just uh, replace the uh, fan motor. It, it is not that uh, complicated. Just compare with the complexer. <laughs> and the last one is uh, maybe something wrong with this uh, com this fan motor drive. So, so just replace it. Next type is the high pressure protection, and this is uh, from the high pressure switch, which means the detected pressure is higher than the preset value, about 4.2 megapa. We will conduct the switch to open circuit. Then, when the system receives this signal, we will uh, do the actions. First is to shut down the complexer, and if all the complexer inside the same chiller is uh, turned off, we will turn off the fans in the in this chiller. And then as for the water pump and the four-way well, is the same as the other errors. And of course, this can automatically uh, recover if the detected uh, pressure is uh, less than uh, this value, 3.6 megapa or you can uh, merely clear from the controller. And of course, we recommend to reset the power for this issue. So, and the possible reason I divided into these three, which is uh, whether the detected pressure is really so high or not. And maybe this uh, pressure sensor is a malfunction. And if and after that, we can uh, consider the reason into the refrigeration cycle. This is uh, within the complexer start up in 15 minutes. You can focus on this refrigeration cycle, and which is uh, why so much refrigeration accumulated at the condensing side. And after 15 minutes, just focus on the water cycle. Why not insufficient capacity like the water flow rate or the temperature is not that good at condensing side. And here is and this is the uh, cooling cycle for example and on the left side is the refrigerant, right side is the water cycle. And within 15 minutes check this refrigerant cycle and focus on the whether the high pressure which is the this one is really so high or not, or just maybe it is a malfunction or poor connected. And next is to check whether the uh, FCU or the chiller on the condensing side, including the heat exchanger, the fans, and also the tube sensor, whether it's good contact with the uh, tube. Or maybe uh, the system abnormal, just like the EXV is a blockage or stunk. First is to check the pressure switch, this one, to check the conducting, just like this, whether it is conducting or not. And next is to check the connection on the PCB, to be connected it to ensure that the connection is okay. And then to step three is to check the circulation, which means the ventilation and also the heat exchanger, whether it is dirty or not, just to ensure uh, the ventilation is good, including the FCU and the chiller. And also as for the uh, two sensor, yes, we have loss of the control, which is this to the ESV control. Uh, just make sure it, it, it is good contact, just like this, 
with the tube. And the next is uh, maybe the EXV is jammed or stuck. And first is to check whether it is good contact with the PCB, just like this. And the next is to check whether the uh, wire from the EXV, just like this, whether it is uh, broken or this uh, short circuit or, or open circuit like this. And after that, you can just reset the power, reset the uh, power of the uh, chiller to check the EXV body, whether there's some vibration or sound, just like that, 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 that. that means the coil can try the inside pin to move up and down. The control is okay, that means. So for the phenomenon for this one, the detail is this. And the first is no flow, that means the inside uh, pin of the ESV is uh, stung or jammed at the low parts, and here is the detail. You can also find that uh, the outlet of this uh, ESV it become lost of the eyes, it become frozen, and also at this time there's no enough refrigerant to flow back to complexer. At that time, the complexer discharge temperature also will be very high, and our countermeasure for this one is just uh, uh, the, the other one for this is uh, maybe this time the inside pin is stung or jammed at the high parts. At that time, we just lead to too much refrigerant flow back to the complexer, which means it will also lead to the liquid uh, hammer. And also, uh, our countermeasure for it is use your. Uh, screwdriver to knock this uh, ESV body and for maybe 70% uh, you can make this uh, impurities to go through of it and the next is just to uh, reinstall, reinstall the coil or just replace the ESV and here is the sectional view of this uh, ESV body you can just find that the refrigerant will just get through from this here actually it is a uh, very tiny just like this it's, you can find it is very tiny so just a uh, very little uh, impurities if it they jam here also relates to the control of the ESV is not that good and here is for the uh, ESV coils and you can also find that and on this case if there's some rust here, also relates to the control is not that good. For this, for this one, you ju you just replace this one. This coil is okay. And if you just worry about the uh, coil, you can also check the resistance value. It should be about uh, 40 ohm when the uh, ambient temperature is 25. You can just check the uh, public with this uh, A or B. Or or minus A or minus B. And let's go back to this slide. And after 15 minutes, just focus on the water cycle. So for the water cycle, for the water cycle, first is to check the pressure gauge. If it just uh, like this, which means the uh, you can see the pointer just uh, vibrate a lot that means uh, too much air trapped in the uh, water system so you can just uh, open this uh, band pipe to release it it's okay and then to check the water pump this perp is to ensure it has enough uh, water flow rate and to check the water pump you need to you can uh, f touch it to feel the vibration or listen to if there is any noise and also uh, is if the water pump there is uh, abnormal temperature rise also means the water pot pump is something wrong with it if the system is in heating mode and you can also check the difference of the high pressure, which is the perfusion saturated temperature and the water leaving temperature. 
the difference of these two it should be less than 5. If higher than 5, that indicates there is too much water scale or the allegate inside the to and shoe heat exchanger. And for this one, this will just a higher the heat transfer resistance, which means we need higher temperature of the refrigerant to deliver the heat to the water. And higher refrigerant temperature also means higher pressure. And the control measure for this one is just to clean this one, just like these pictures, to clean the scale or the other gay with the mechanical or the chemical methods. And also you can check the difference of the water leaving and entering temperature. The difference should be uh, less than 8 degree. If higher than that, that means the water rate is not enough. And why it's not enough? So you can check the water pump. Maybe it's malfunction, or maybe the uh, water pipeline is blockage. And just focus on the filter and the soft connection. Maybe it's not that good. And especially uh, the water pressure before and after the blockage, the pressure change a lot. Or maybe the water volume is not enough. At that time, also check the water pressure. If it is less than uh, this value, that means not enough water inside. And this is the summary of the high pressure protection. The next is the low pressure protection and also only triggered by the pressure switch which means the detected low pressure is less than our preset value so we conduct this uh, pressure switch to be open circuit. In cooling mode it is about uh, 0.45 megapart. Heating mode is about 0.1 megapart. And this is the actions uh, the system will do if we will see this uh, open circuit and also it will be uh, automatically recover if we detect the value is higher than uh, this and so just focus on the possible reasons and also the first is to check whether the pressure is really so low or not and of course after that it is if the complexor start up in 15 minutes this error occurs you need to focus on the refrigerant cycle and which is why there's not enough refrigerant at the evaporating side and after 15 minutes just focus on the water cycle why not enough capacity just like the uh, water flow rate or the water temperature is not that good And the next is the uh, high discharge temperature protection. Actually, this one is very similar to the last one, which is the low pressure protection, and which is uh, the compressor cannot uh, intake enough refrigerant. And for this, this one, the first is it will all cause this to the low pressure, right? And the next is uh, there's not enough refrigerant to cool the compressor down, also leads to the complexer discharge temperature to be very high and just like this uh, pictures and this insert the refrigerant from here and then this is the compression chamber after it it will just contact with the coils and the coil is the most hottest inside the complexer when it goes through it it just uh, cool it down and also makes it to be very hot so if we detected this here is uh, higher than this about uh, 125 degree, it will also lead to this error. And the checking method is of course, and first to check really is really the temperature of this charge complexer is so high or not. And within complexer start up 15 minutes, just uh, focus on the refrigerant cycle. And after 15 minutes, focus on the water cycle. The detail 
and this time I, I make it to be hitting. This is the hitting cycle. And to check the reference cycle first, and it is all very similar to the high pressure protection. And the difference is just here. Maybe this reference leakage. Here is the detail. I just uh, focus on the uh, different points. And for this two, which is the low pressure protection or the uh, high compressor discharge temperature error. First, we need to check the uh, low pressure sensor, which is, the, is this one, the conducting, uh, and this uh, compressor discharge sensor, also to compare with the standard value. Or if this two is okay, then uh, to check the wiring. And as for the refrigerant leakage, you can use the uh, refrigerant leakage detector or the salt water, or you can uh, check the whether there is some oil spot on the, the uh, refrigerant uh, copper pie. If there is some oil uh, spot, that means this must be leakage. As you know that the oil and the refrigerant they mix together. If there is some leakage, the refrigerant will coming out, and of course it will bring the oil out and the refrigerant will become gas but the oil it will stay next we will go to the flow switch protection and this is only uh, triggered by the flow switch which is the detected water flow rate is less than the preset value and the preset value for different model they are different and of course, we conduct the open uh, circuit just like a switch. And here is the actions that we will uh, uh, do when we, did, when we see the open circuit signal. And it is the same. So the, uh, here is the possible reason. And first is maybe the flow switch is abnormal. Just check the uh, connection and the wiring. And maybe water pump is something wrong or the water flow rate is not enough. This time, just check the uh, inside water pressure. And maybe the water system is a uh, blockage like the filter or the soft connection is not that good. Or maybe there's too much air inside the water system. At that time, you can check the uh, uh, water pressure gauge. If the pointer is uh, vibrate a lot, they indicate too much air inside. Or maybe there is something wrong with the mail, the uh, mail ball. Here is the details. So for the flow switch to check the wiring, and also the connection to the uh, PCB, and for the water system blockage, uh, just focus on the filter. Whether this is some blockage or the core deformation, just like this. And as for the water flow rate, if it is not in enough to check the water pressure to ensure it is in this range. And uh, next is the gas missing protection of the four way well. And first of all, this is only uh, the simple. There's no error trigger. That means the system will not uh, tell you that uh, I find that there's the, something wrong with the four-way well. It just will display the symptom. And before that, I'd like to introduce how the uh, four-way well operate. And from this uh, picture, you can find it. Here is the slider, this one. And there are four ports. D connect to the complexer discharge. S port connected to the compressor suction side, E for the evaporator, C for the condenser. And here is there is a pilot valve. Actually, there is, this is the small size four-way valve. You can also find it, this one, it is the capillary. It connected to here to detect the uh, high pressure. And this to here to get the low pressure. And we just use this a uh, small size uh, four-way well to conduct the uh, uh, direction change. And here currently it is the heating mode because uh, the comp 
the wave function from the complexer will flow to the condenser first. So if we need to change it to cooling mode, the system with the uh, four wave will, will just like this. So you can find that we just uh, move this solenoid valve. Then from here, we just use the inside reflection pressure to push this slider to the other side. So uh, for this uh, get missing protection, uh, that means this slider will stay at this middle position, right? And then the reflection from the, this deep pole can flow into these three pies, and then there's no heating or cooling. And here is the uh, change direction requirements. And first is we need to ensure the uh, solenoid valve, which is this one, it has enough power, which is enough wattage to push this one. And the next is the smooth movement of the slider, just like this one. For example, if this uh, slider is a deformation also makes the inside this cannot move and also the next is to ensure the cleanliness of the four-way well just for example this uh, the impurities which is a uh, uh, jam or stung the capillary if uh, it will also make the uh, pilot wheel cannot get the high or low pressure then if you cannot get the pressure you cannot move this one if it cannot move this one, also this slider, it cannot change direction successfully. And here is the check method. And of course, you can just uh, touch the pie just like this to feel it, whether it is uh, hot or cold. If the temperature is close, that means the foil well is uh, malfunction. And of course, you can also double check from the uh, the controller and the last one is uh, you can also check the pressure suction side temperature if it is higher than the outdoor ambient temperature the judgment is yes it is a uh, confirmed gas missing just like this and the last I will play I will play a, a video for you to how to uh, for this one Rider to move the direction successful. Then from the noise, we can also judge that uh, the, uh, this is okay. And also to work from this E and C pi, the temperature difference. That's all for this presentation. And we will go to the Q&A time. And Still, if you have any question, you can just feel free to contact me on this email address.